Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the Native American experience following the Civil War. First we'll discuss how Native Americans were impacted by westward expansion, and then we'll discuss the government policies that supported it. Let's start with a little bit of background knowledge. In 1830, President Andrew Jackson signed into law the Indian Removal Act. The result was the forced relocation of approximately 60,000 Native Americans by foot from the lands east of the Mississippi River. It was called the Trail of Tears because as many as 25% perished during the forced march from their homelands. Okay, let's talk about the impact of westward expansion on Native Americans. The 1840s was a period that saw the beginning of immense expansion for the United States. Conquests from war with Mexico in 1848 increased dramatically the amount of land under U.S. control, and rumors of the gold in the hills of California led to the rush of thousands of prospectors to the West. The 1862 Homestead Act promised free land to any Americans who could keep a farm, and the building of a railroad that would cross the continent in 1869 made fast travel possible. As Americans moved westward, they began to encounter the native populations that had lived there for generations, which often led to conflict between the two groups. A central aspect of the Native American experience during this time was the depletion of the buffalo. Buffalo were an essential resource for the Plains Indians. American settlers constructed fences and property lines, often defined by barbed wire, that limited migration patterns. But the most devastating impact on the buffalo was from commercial hunting. Buffalo hides were a popular item back east and in Europe, and thousands were killed daily. The American government encouraged the hunting of buffalo as well in order to remove pressure on the cattle ranchers and to devastate the Native American population to force them onto reservations. As pressure on the Native Americans increased, conflict ensued. Settlers and tribes would often exchange attacks on one another, and from 1860 to 1890, a series of Indian wars was led by the U.S. military to relocate the Plains Indians. While some engagements resulted in victories for the Native Americans, such as the Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876, the disproportionate strength of the American military meant that most battles resulted in devastating losses for the Plains Indians. Some were overwhelmingly brutal, such as the Sand Creek Massacre of 1864. In this event, U.S. troops attacked a Cheyenne and Arapaho settlement in southwestern Colorado Territory, killing and mutilating approximately 150 people, about two-thirds of whom were women and children. To summarize, westward expansion had a devastating effect on the Native Americans. Both the intentional depletion of buffalo and the armed conflicts led the Native Americans in a precarious state. To make matters worse, there were a number of government policies that further impacted Native Americans. The approach of the U.S. government toward the Native Americans shifted between 1860 and 1890. Early approaches were defined by conflict and forced relocation. Toward the 1870s, the government shifted in its approach towards the tribes. By this point, most of the tribes in the West were either confined to reservations or devastated by the loss of buffalo and the conflict with American settlers and troops. In 1867, the Indian Peace Commission decided to remove all remaining Indian tribes to reservations and made efforts to civilize them. This included funding the Indian boarding schools for Native American children, such as the Carlisle Indian Industrial School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. The mission of its founder, U.S. General Richard Pratt, was to kill the Indian but save the man, and recruitment for the school focused on the tribes that were still resisting American settlement on their lands. These schools aimed to transform the culture of Native American children by teaching them English, American customs, and Christianity. Similarly, the Dawes Act of 1887 divided communal tribal land on reservations into private holdings. Each family was assigned a piece of land and given rights to it. But since most Native Americans were unfamiliar with contracts, the English language, and the concept of private property in general, Many were tricked into selling their land to American businessmen at a huge loss of profit. By 1890, almost all Native American tribes were confined to reservations in remote, undesirable lands in the West. Their numbers dramatically reduced. The Native American population decreased from approximately 7 million to 250,000. In 1890, what is considered to be the final conflict of the Indian Wars occurred near Wounded Knee Creek in South Dakota, when 300 Lakota Sioux, mostly women and children, were massacred by U.S. soldiers. 
Years later, reflecting on that day, Black Elk stated, I did not know how much was in it. When I look back now, from this high hill of my old age, I can still see the butchered women and children lying heaped and scattered all along the crooked gulch, as plain as when I saw them with their eyes still young. And I can see that something else died there in that bloody mud and was buried in the blizzard. A people's dream died there. It was a beautiful dream. Thanks, everyone.